Our next step is to go ahead and see what the shape of our cost curves are going to look like with our MC, AVC, ATC, and AFC curves. We notice that MC, AVC, and ATC are going to all have the same sort of shape because when quantity goes up, we notice they start fairly high, they start to decline, and they start to climb once again. So that gives us an idea of what each of these shapes of these curves are going to take a look like. It's going to be a U-shaped curve, and we'll get into that a little bit later. The easiest one to go ahead and take a look at is our AFC curve, where as we increase quantity, we notice the value keeps on declining and declining and declining as it gets very, very close to zero. So that tells us our AFC curve is always going to continuously default, and that is exactly what the curve does look like. So the average fixed cost curve always decreases as production increases, because remember that fixed cost itself is a constant value. So essentially, as we increase production, as we increase the amount of goods that the firm is going to produce, it's going to be spread over more and more of this fixed cost. So here, we notice that at very low outputs, the fixed cost, the average fixed cost is very high. But as we increase production, the average fixed cost starts to decline and decline and climb. And it actually gets really, really close to zero. It'll never get close to, it will never equal to zero. It just is essentially going to be asymptotic as it gets close to the output axis right here. And the special name that we give to this downward sloping line, this continuously downward sloping line, and this is the only time we're going to see this downward sloping line in any of these cost curves, it's called the spreading effect in this instance. So anytime we talk about the shape of our average fixed cost curve, we are going to give a special name which is known as a spreading effect. So we'll start off here. The spreading effect. Sounds pretty dirty, the spreading effect. So the spreading effect tells us that in the short run, remember we're still working in this time period, in the short run, total fixed costs do not change. Total fixed costs, fixed costs do not change. Remember, they stay constant. And because they do not change, we notice that increasing production, so that increasing production, increasing production, spreads the fixed costs over more units of output. So it spreads the fixed costs over more units of output. Over more units of output. So essentially here, we notice that in the short run, total fixed costs do not change, so that increasing production spreads the fixed cost over more units of output. And that's exactly why we have an average fixed cost curve that is going to be continuously decreasing as it gets very, very close to zero, going to be asymptotic as it gets closer to the horizontal axis. So that's just the unique feature that we have here with the AFC. We are going to be a little bit more concerned with the other curves, though, and that's where we take a look at the AVC, ATC, and MC curves, which are all going to be U-shaped. For the AVC and ATC curves, we notice that at, no, at relatively low levels of output, the cost curves are going to slope downward because this reflects increasing returns. Remember that when we started off with the firm, when we hired more laborers, we were starting off in the increasing marginal returns where each additional worker hired gave us more output than the previous worker, and because they're being more efficient, more productive, that tells us that our costs are going to be lower in this region. So that's why we notice that, hey, as we keep on increasing our workers, our costs are going to be a little bit lower once we start off. However, as production starts to increase, as we hire more and more workers to produce more output, the diminishing returns are going to set in. So each new worker hired is going to bring in less than the previous worker, and then that's when these costs are going to rise. So there are a few things that we want to note when we plot all three of these curves together. So the ABC, ATC, and the MC curves. First thing that we want to notice is, number one, the ATC curve is always going to be above the ABC curve. And why is that? Remember, ATC is the sum of AVC and AFC, so ATC is always going to be bigger than AVC. If we want to find the AFC, the average fixed cost, it's essentially just going to be the difference between these two lines that we have right here, between the ATC and the AVC. So if we take it for any given quantity, we notice that the distance between the ATC and AVC, that is always going to equal our average fixed cost. And you notice that as we increase our output, this difference is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller because the AFC is declining as production increases. The ABC will get very, very close to the ATC, but it will never intersect, it will never touch it, essentially for this reason. So that's the first thing that we want to notice here. 
The second thing that we want to notice is where exactly does the marginal cost curve intersect? The marginal cost curve is always going to intersect at the minimum of the ABC and the minimum of the ATC curves. That's just by design. And because it intersects at the minimum of each of these curves, there are a few unique relationships that develop as well. So let's go ahead and talk a bit about those. So here we want to talk about the MC curve and its relationship. So MC, marginal cost, intersects the minimum the minimum of the AVC of the AVC and ATC curves and that's something that we already said that was by design because of this feature we notice exactly what's going to be happening to the ATC and AVC curves slopes in each of these particular regions so suppose that ATC or AVC is above MC so when ATC or AVC is above marginal cost, then what is ATC or the AVC curves doing? So essentially what we're talking about is this region right here where AVC or ATC is above the blue line. So these green lines are above the blue lines. And what do we notice about each of these curves? We notice that the slopes are declining in this region. So with this, we can go ahead and write that. We can go ahead and write that down. So when ATC or AVC is above MC, then ATC or AVC is falling. And basically this stems from the fact because the MC intersects the minimum of the AVC and ATC curves. That tells us that the opposite is also going to hold true as well. So when ATC or AVC is below marginal cost, then each of these curves, ATC, or AVC is rising instead. So here we notice that there are going to be relationships that do develop between the AVC, ATC, and MC curves. For the second part, we notice that we're taking a look at the portion where we're going here. So if the ATC or AVC curves are below the marginal cost curve, then that's exactly the region where these curves are going to be having an upward or positive slope. And because of this, this is going to lead us to a lot of different business strategies when we go ahead and take a look at different business structures and perfect competition, monopoly, monopolistic competition, and oligopoly. In fact, these curves, all of these curves are going to come back to haunt us in the next few chapters. So it would be a good idea just to get the sort of foundations that we have right here. Marginal cost intersects the minimum of each of these curves. We notice exactly where they're going to be falling, where they're going to be increasing. And we notice that ATC is always going to be above the ABC curves. And the distance between them is essentially the average fixed cost. We'll go ahead and turn our attention to the long run and see how that's going to differ from all the sort of things that we laid out previously with the short run in the next section.